okay the following resolution rule is used in logic programming derive clause p or q from clauses p or r comma q or not r so this is the resolution principle you must have seen it okay in which from this thing p or r and q or not r you can you can you can get p or q okay, and then the question is which of the following statements related to this rule is false so out of these four options which are, we have to find that which of them is fall in relation to the resolution principle okay so what is the first one the first one is p or r and q or not r implies p or q is logically valid so what we have to check is that whether this implication is true or not okay and this thing is you can you know that this is the resolution principle what is given in option a that you can you, imp, you can imply this from this whole thing so it, it has to be true from the resolution principle but we can we can quickly verify the validity of this thing okay so how do you verify the validity so we talk about option a and it says that uh, what I'm going to do is first I'm going to write it down exactly what is written there so P or R and Q or not R this thing implies P or Q so I have to tell whether this is valid or not okay so if it is valid this implication is valid then then what you know is that if this whole thing is true okay if this whole thing is true then this should also be true okay uh, that is one thing and uh, what you can do now is that if this whole thing is true and you have this and in between which means that this whole thing must be true okay and this whole thing must also be true okay because there is an and and for the whole thing to be true these two uh, small things must be true as well okay so this whole thing is true and this whole thing is true that's what we know and let's take it case by case okay so let's assume the case that suppose r is false okay so what you know is that this r is false suppose this thing r is false then what will be this not r then this not r will be true okay and this whole thing has to be true so to make this whole thing true this p is forced to be true okay because this r is false and this is p or r this whole thing is true so this p must be true okay so if this p must be true then out here also it must be true so this whole thing becomes true so that kind of proves it for when r is false and you can do the same thing for the case when r is true so i am going to do it quickly for that case so now suppose r is true so what you know is that this thing out here this r is true so that means this is false okay now what you have to do is you need this whole thing to be true and you know that this thing is false so the q is forced to be true when q is forced to be true so it has to be true out here also which will again make this whole thing true so that is one thing so if this is true then this must be true all right so if this left side of implication is true then this must be true and uh, we have seen that that is actually the case okay what about this if this thing is false what about if if this whole thing on the left is false what do you have then okay if this whole thing on the left is suppose false this whole thing then we don't care whether this is true or false we don't care the implication will always be true right we don't care because the implication is true 
for both false implies false and both false implies true okay that's the property of implication the only thing that we have that can that can make the implication false is this thing when you have true out here but false out here that is what is problematic okay so basically you only need to check for if this is true then whether this is going to be true or not so this sort of tells us that this a part is not false this thing is logically valid so this is not false this is in fact true and we have to look for false okay so this brings us to the next one which is uh, B so I'm, I'm just going to quickly delete in and then we'll come to B okay so what is B B is the other way around okay what is B saying B is saying that you take P or Q like this and then what you are going to do is uh, you're going to imply P or R like this and Q or not R okay so this is Q I'll just quickly change it this is Q hmm. this thing is Q okay so again what you have to do is you have to check that if this whole thing is true then whether this thing is true or not if this is true your implication is fine if you can come up with something which makes this thing false then you are in big trouble so what I'm going to do is I'm going to to give you this case okay so suppose P is true okay and Q is false suppose this is the case so in that case this thing is true so left side is true because true or false is true and what do you have in the right side so you have true here but you have false out here okay and what do you know what, what can you do now suppose suppose let's talk about the case when this R is true suppose this R is true then this not R will be false okay and what will be this whole thing okay so that will false or false will make this whole thing false and this whole thing is true so true and false will become false in that case okay so this side is false so what you are getting basically is true implies false which is definitely going to prove that this thing is not valid okay because if something is valid it has to be always true so this implication is not true because we had true on the left side of implication but we got false on the right side of implication but the truth of implication means that if this is true the left side of implication is true then the right side must be true the right side has to be true so this kind of tells us that this is the one which is false okay so this is the correct choice and uh, you can stop here but if you want to inquire the C and D out of curiosity that how do they go we can do that as well so what is C so P or Q is satisfiable so now what is satisfiability is different from validity okay so something is satisfiable when you can come up with some example when it is true okay so P or Q P or Q is is satisfiable if and only if P or R and Q Q or not R is satisfiable so what you have to do is you have to just come up with certain examples certain certain values for P and Q that will make this true that is satisfiability satisfiability doesn't mean that it has to be always true it has it has to be just uh, if, if, if it is always true that is validity a yeah, valid statement is always true a satisfiable statement is a statement that can be made true by choosing certain values so it is uh, so that's what you have to do you have to choose certain values so that this whole becomes true and this whole becomes true also okay so and this if and only if sort of tells you that 
it's the both side of implication okay so this should imply this and this should implies this so what you can do is you can choose true and true for p and q uh, which will make this true and this true and this whole thing will be true as well so this was true and this whole thing will be true as well so which will make the whole thing true okay so you got this thing from this side so it's satisfiable and what you can do is basically you can do the same thing from the right side to the left side so you can make assume that this whole thing is true then you can you have to you are forced to get this this thing hold true or and this thing hold true and you can make that true by assuming that p is true and q is true and when you put them on the left side so you get this side of the implication also true because in that case you will get this whole thing true so that sort of proves that this is also true and not false so you you eliminate this and and this is quite simple this is quite simple because this thing can only be false when both p and q are false or both p and q you have to put the value false or unsatisfiable so this is quite obvious and so that's it so we are done with this thing